فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم وكن ذاكرا لله في كل حالة فليس لذكر الله وقت مقيد Constantly observe, observe the dhikr of Allah in all circumstances as dhikr of Allah has no time to which it is restricted. The author says, وَكُنْ ذَاكِرًا لِلَّهِ فِي كُلِّ حَالَةٍ Give consideration to his saying here of the remembrance of Allah in every situation of your life. وَجَمِيعُ الشُّؤُونِكَ and all of your affairs. And don't be from those who are heedless. Because as it's been narrated in Sahih Muslim in Hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that she said كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكر الله على كل أحيانه that the messenger used to remember Allah in all of his situations. So he used to remember Allah في حال القيام when he was standing. He used to remember Allah في حال القعود when he was sitting. Alayhi salatu wasalam and he was lying. Fi hali al-dija' wa fi hali al-dhahab and the times that he would leave. Every time he would remember Allah. And he was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most from the creations of Allah those who remembered him. The author goes on to say فَلَيْسَ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَقْتٌ مُقَيَّدُ the remembrance of Allah doesn't have a restricted time. There is not a time where you designate the remembrance of Allah. Allah is remembered and is exalted every time and every place. Whether that time may be from the night or whether that time may be from the day. But there are some adhkar which we can say are restricted at a particular time. Such as adhkar al-sabah and adhkar al-masa, adhkar adbar salawat, the adhkar that are done in the morning and those which are done in the evening and the adhkar that is done after the prayer. And the likes of these adhkar are known as al-adhkar al-muqayyadah. Because they are restricted to what? بِوَقْتٍ مُعَيَّنْ أو حَالٍ مُعَيَّنْ أو سَبَبٍ مُعَيَّنْ It is restricted to either a particular time or a particular situation or a particular reason. But there are adhkar which are mutlaqah, unrestricted. And that is what the one, the one that the author is speaking about. That doesn't mean because those adhkar are restricted at a particular time that I can't remember Allah except those times, that isn't the case. فَلَيْسَ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَقْتٌ مُقَيَّدُ Now the author, rahimahullah, he's going to go into speaking about فَضَائِلُ dhikr The virtues of remembrance of Allah. The virtues that it has. Naam. فَذِكْرُ إِلَهِ الْعَرْشِ سِرًّا وَمُعْلَنًا يُزِيلُ الشَّقَى وَالْهَمَّ عَنْكَ وَيَطْرُدُ Dhikr of the Lord of the Throne inwardly and outwardly rids you of misery and distress and repels them. The author says فَذِكْرُ إِلَهِ الْعَرْشِ سِرًّا Remembering Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala the Lord of the Throne. Sirran, he means here what? A fi nafsika, inside yourself, privately. Wa mu'lanan means on your tongue. So a person remembers Allah without having utterance coming from their tongue. O, wa mu'lanan, o, mu'lanan. The person says it loud. This wow here is lit tanwi'ah. Either of them. Both of them yuzilu shaka. This is the first benefit that the author mentions to us. Yuzilu shaka is the first benefit that the dhikr has. He gives to us from the benefits that it has, remembering Allah Tabaraka wa Taala, 
And that means it removes distress. And the opposite of ashaka is what? As-sa'ada, happiness. Depression. And what removes it is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if it removes uh, if it removes distress and depression, what will take the place then? Halati Sa'ada. Happiness then will occur. And the person will feel in their heart in his life he feels tranquility and at ease and he finds the comfort in his eyes and now what I want you to all realize is that happiness it does not mean that you're not going through a hard time this is one thing you truly have to understand happiness is an action or it's a favor Allah places in a person's heart even that the person is suffering and is enduring a lot of pain and calamities, externally it does not in any way, form or shape affect the person's heart. Have you not seen many people who are living a very hard life and don't have any means of income and have seen atrocities around them? Ma'adalika, the smile that they are able to give Billionaires may not be able to. And millionaires may not be able to give it. Are you with me, brothers? It brings happiness to the heart. And the author also says, And it removes from you pain. Again, ham is also a distress. As Allah told us in the Quran, Ala bi qulub. For verily in the remembrance of Allah does the heart find tranquility. Surah Al Ra'd, Ayah 28. So the heart will not find tranquility except through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so far what we've learned is that. The remembrance of Allah is what gives tranquility to our hearts. It gets rid of distress, depression, agony, anxiety. You don't need to take pills. You don't need prescriptions from doctors. You don't need to go to a consultant. This is already prescribed for you 1,400 and something years ago. Is the fact that you have left the remembrance of Allah. And your heart has become empty. And your heart has become distant from the remember of, remembrance of Allah. And all your heart is yearning for, it's its creator. Just like when your body loses protein, it affects your body. If you're not taking enough protein, you lose energy. You need glucose in order to make the body function. These are minerals that the body needs. The heart also needs dhikr the remembrance of Allah. And when it doesn't gain it, and it doesn't ha- get, it, get its amount that is required, your heart will start to become hollow, empty. And then you'll start to feel suicidal. Depression, anxieties, distress. A lot of people, my beloved brothers and sisters, what they try to do is, they try the dhikr for a week or two. They don't see no results, for example, as they may say. And they stop straight away. They stop straight away. Ibn al-Qayyim said something very powerful. A year or two, you want remembering Allah. And by one week or two weeks or a month, you want your heart to feel full. It's like a a uh, utensil, a bottle, or a a gallon of you're placing water in there, but the water that you're placing is drops of water. You've done it for an hour. This thing is empty, and it has been empty for a very long time. The size of it is big. 
So Ibn al-Qayyim is comparing is the timing that you were distant from the dhikr, which is equal to this big, uh, big gallon. That when you pour a cup of water in there, it won't get full. The same is with a heart who's not been remembering Allah for a very long time. You need to be remembering Him for a lot of times in order for it to then show on your limbs and your heart to finally feel if I for example my car breaks down due to lack of petrol and I go and I put one pound in there and I go to the car and I pour the one pound in there and I look at the car and I say take it and the car still doesn't move and I keep saying, but I put money in there. The one pound will not really do anything for you. صح? Depending on the car, but it won't do it for you. صح? That, but that one pound will do something for somebody whose car is engine is small, right? The same is with the person whose heart was always remembering Allah. But they became heedless for a very short time. If they come back, they're going to what? They're easily going to, inshallah ta'ala, this depression and anxiety will go. But if you, your remembrance of Allah is very little, for very short, for a very long period of time you didn't do it, when you do come back, you need to be doing it for a very long time. Allah says in the Quran, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ نِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَقْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَّلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ مَا the time was very long. So this person's heart became Qaswatul Qalb happened. And to get out of Qaswatul Qalb, you need to really be doing it for a very long time in order for your heart to come back to your life. So a month or two is not enough for you. And that is why it's important. That is why Ibn al Qayyim says it's important. So giving up straight away and saying to yourself, that I have been doing dhikr and I'm still depressed and I've tried everything which you've prescribed to me will say when a person is in a coma is not like a person who's got a headache your situation is critical when a person heart stops working what do they do? they take what? what's that they, which their doctors use? And how they resuscitate the person they place those huh? Resuscitation is when they push the person down or something. What's that? What's that? Uh, defibrillators. 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 Yeah, that. Which they use to bring back the person. And then they put masks on the person. And then the person is dealt with seriously. That's what many people's situation is like. But then what they want to do is they want to use a paracetamol. Or they want to use simple medication in order to? No. You need zikr. You need to go in with it and you need to make sure that you let it, inshallah ta'ala, uh, time go by. Don't give up. Do it. And it is very bad as an attribute, as an individual. I'll give you an example. A wife and a husband are married. The wife says to her husband, okay, I'm going to change. And after a week, she says, I'm going to change. I'm going to stop my bad habits. I'm going to become a different person. I'm going to try, inshallah ta'ala, stop those things that you've complained about. I'm going to change now. After a week, if she goes back to how she used to be, will that person ever think to themselves, she's done it for a week, so it's changed his perspective, or is he going to see, still see her as that period of time? Or is he still going to see her as, as having this bad characteristics? Question. So a sister and a, husband, a wife and a husband are married, and what the wife does is that they both complain to each other. So the husband writes down all his uh, cons and the wife also writes all the cons that are against her. So everybody promises that they're going to change. Let's say, for instance, the sister says, I'm going to change my bad uh, characteristics. So she does it for a week. After a week, she comes back to how she was. Let's say after a week, she comes to her husband and she says, look, I've changed, I'm changing, look at me, I'm changing. And she mentions that all the time. Is that a good thing? Is that a good thing that she keeps bringing it up? I'm changing. No, it's not Sifa Hamida. 
That's the characteristics of many Muslims who say, I'm doing dhikr, but nothing's changing. I'm doing dhikr, but nothing's changing. It's not a good thing. If you're doing dhikr, keep doing it. There's no need for you to mention it. Because this is something good that you're doing. Regardless of your depression goes or not, it's something you need to do because it's something you should do. Are you with me? So if the husband and the wife, the wife keeps saying, I'm changing, I'm going to change, and I'm going to change. Are you with me? It's not a good tra trait, and it's not a good character. It's something that she should adopt, and she do it regardless of what the circumstances are. The same applies with the, the husband himself. Those cons that are mentioned about him are things that he needs to adopt and do regardless of what the situation is. So this is the many, many Muslims' problems that you find. They do something, and after a week or so, they, they said, I tried it, it never worked. The reason you did it is because you just wanted to get a result. You're a bit, it's the problem. Even that wife, what she did it for is that she wanted just in a week for her husband to forget everything. For the years that she was doing her mistakes, she wants him to forget everything in one week. And to oh, Does that make sense? And for his preconceived notion to eradicate, which isn't the case. If you've been lying for the last four years, and you said, I'm going to stop lying, and then after a week... You stopped lying just for a week. You want him to totally think that you're not a liar anymore? Is that going to happen? You probably need the same amount of four years to change the perspective for him to forget what was there before. Are you with me? And that's how the reality of this everything is. But what we have is this very stingy way of looking at things. We want to do something and we want to see the results straight away. I did this, I went, where's the result to it? So I changed for a week. Where that week I changed. Yeah? That week I changed. Where does it go? You see how that that's but you're not changing because you need to change. Regardless of what the person thinks of you or the regardless of the perceptions of others. And that's the same with the dhikr of Allah and his remembrance, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Am I making matters clear? Mm -hmm. The remembrance of Allah is the same. You don't complain and say, Oh, I've tried it and it didn't work. And if it didn't? You always want to see results for what you do. Why do you... Okay, pay attention to this. Let's just say you did do dhikr, but you got other things for it, not, the, not what you were looking for. Why does Allah have to give you exactly what you want? What about if He gave you other things? What about if you were a woman, you didn't know this, you're a woman who would not have had children. And by starting dhikr, and then you got married, Allah Ta'ala uplifted that from you. But you never knew that because you weren't married before. You would never have known that you're a woman who couldn't have children. These are things that you also have to keep in mind. And understand. Now. وَيَجْلِبُ لِلْخَيْرَاتِ دُنْيًا وَآجِلًا وَإِن تَأْتِيكَ وَسْوَاسُ وَإِن يَأْتِكَ الْوَسْوَاسُ يَوْمًا يُشَرِّدُ It brings about all good in this world and the hereafter. And should the whisperer come to you at any time, it fends him off. The author now goes into this line of poetry. He mentions two extra benefits that dhikr has. Two more. Two more benefits. The first one is, وَيَجْلِبُ لِلْخَيَرَاتِ دُنْيًا وَآجِلًا That the remembrance of Allah brings to you. وَيَجْلِبُ means what? It brings about. It brings forward. It makes you gain and achieve Al-khayrat, good, and barakat, blessings. Whilst you're in this world, dunyan in this dunya, such as what? Sihatul badan. You're physically, Allah makes your body healthy. Wa quwwatan fi jismihi. Wa safa' fi aqli. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gives you a healthy brain you can think with. Allah also gives you a Good rizq, subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of those are benefits of this dunya. It brings that for you. The one who remembers Allah, he gains khair in his dunya, barakat in his dunya. Sah? Then, which is still the wa'ajilan fi daril akhirah. Also in the hereafter, it, bring, it brings about 
good for the hereafter. Allah rewards you for remembering him. It also repels from you. We're still on the first one. It also repels from you the opposite of both of them. If it brings about good, then it also repels evil from you in this dunya. And if it also brings you good in the hereafter, it repels evil from you in the hereafter. The second one the author mentions in the second shatr of the line is If the whisperer, the one who wants to whisper to you and bring waswas to you, which is who? Ash-shaytanu, shaytan. Remembrance of Allah wa ta'ala is what to him? Taridun. It is one that repels him, pushes him away from you as a slave of Allah. And if you are heedless of Allah's remembrance and you're a person who rarely remembers of Allah, remembers Allah, then what does that what, what does it open for you? What does it open for you? It opens for shaitan to have a path to misguiding you and whispering to you. Are you with me, brothers? You all know the famous ayah in the Quran. That the person who forgets the remembrance of Allah and he is heedless of the remembrance of Allah, Allah tells us, Shaytan then becomes your closest friend. And will shaitan bring about good for you? No, not at all. وَلِذَلِكَ ابْنَ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُ He said, الشَّيْطَانُ جَاثِمٌ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ الْآِبْنِ آدَمِ The shaitan is one that sniffs the people's hearts. It's one that observes the people's hearts and looks at it. If the person becomes heedless and he senses from them that the person is heedless and he's not on his toes, وَسْوَسْ say places, وَسْوَسْ فَإِذَا ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ but when the person remembers Allah, khanasa, he turns away, running away. Ibn al-Qayyim mentions in his kitab al-Wabul al-Sayyib. So shaitan who's your enemy will be far from you by remembering Allah. وَلِذَلِكَ there's a famous hadith, a very famous hadith. And Imam al-Tirmidhi narrated this hadith in his sunan. That Zakaria said to his people, Nabi Allah Zakaria said to his people, Inna Allah amarani bi khamsi kalimat. Allah commanded me five things. And a'mala bihinna for me to implement those five things first. I have to implement them first. Before I preach it to anybody, I myself, Zakaria, have to implement it. So the person has to first of all implement what they know. First of all, oh Allah make us those who implement what we know. And forgive us for what we don't implement that we preach to others. And I was also commanded and I was told by Allah to command you guys to implement it as well. And then Zakaria mentioned so many things from them, which, which, which was what? I command you and Tadkurullah to remember Allah. Pay attention to this now. He tells them straight away the benefits that they're going to gain if they remember Allah. He says, فَإِنَّمَا مَثَلُ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّ Sorry, فَإِنَّ مَثَلَ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّ مَثَلَ ذَلِكَ The example and the parable of this is كَمَثَلِ رَجُّلٍ خَرَجَ الْعَدُوُّ فِي أَثْرِهِ سَرِيعًا حَتَّى إِذَا أَتَى عَلَى حِصْلٍ حَصِينٍ It's like a person who the enemies are on his toe. I'm a heel. They are on his they're on his hill. They're so close to him. And he's running away. And they're on his hill. They are just about to catch him. And then he throws himself into a big strong fortress. And he locks himself in. كَذَلِكَ الْعَبْدُ Just like that is the slave. لَا يُحْرِزُ نَفْسَهُ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ إِلَّا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ That a slave 
cannot protect himself from shaitan except with the remembrance of Allah. So that's why the author of the book, Sa'id ibn Wahf al-Qahtani, he called his book Hisn al-Muslim. He got it from his hadith, which is the fortress of a Muslim. Fortress from what? Protects himself from what? Ash-shaytan. So this book is a fortress. You're protecting yourself. From who? Ash-shaytan. فقد أخبر المختار يوما لصحبه بأن كثير الذكر في في السبق مفرد The chosen one certainly told his companions one day that those plentiful in the dhikr have outdone others The author now mentions another benefit فَائِدَةٌ مِنْ فَوَائِدِ الذِّكْرِ Another benefit from the benefit of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ told them that the ones who remember Allah, they have surpassed everyone else. And the Shaykh rahimahullah is referring to the hadith, famous hadith Sahih Muslim, hadith Abi Huraira. أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال that the Prophet said سبق المفردون the مفردون have surpassed everybody قالوا the companions they said وما المفردون who are the مفردون يا رسول الله أو the messenger of Allah and the messenger responded by saying الذاكرون الله كثيرا والذاكرات the مفردون are the ones who remember Allah from the male and the female. So the author here is saying, فَقَدْ أَخْبَرَ الْمُخْتَارُ يَوْمًا لِصَحْبِهِ That the chosen one, meaning the Prophet wasallam, he informed his companions, يَوْمًا one day, he said to them, بِأَنَّ كَثِيرَ الذِّكْرِ That the one who remembers Allah the most, فِي السَّبْقِ مُفْرِدُ is the ones who remember Allah most have surpassed everyone else. So the Shaykh Rahimahullah is referring to that particular hadith. They pass everybody else and they gain darajat whilst they are sitting with you. They are going through one station after another station. You're both sitting next to each other. But as he is sitting with you, he's moving from one level to another level to another level in Jannah. ولذلك our messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام he told us words that are very light on the tongue. We're going to come to see that soon inshallah. Very light on the tongue. كلمتان خفيفتان في اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن سبحان الله وبحمد سبحان الله العظيم أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Saying subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al-azim is very light on the tongue heavy on the scale and very beloved to Allah It's very light on your tongue you could just be sitting there and saying it all day Not only that not only that you can be sitting with somebody and whilst you're saying it you're moving from one stage in Jannah to another level in Jannah and you're passing that person. You're not going anywhere. You're physically not doing anything. You're just sitting there and saying it. That's how powerful it is. Sabaq al Mufarridun. The Mufarrid is the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, male or female. Well, some of our mashayikh, especially one of the mashayikh I met. Uh, in Somalia, Sheikh Ahmed, uh, Dr. Ahmed Imam, Hafidahullah, I have not seen, Wallahi, I have not seen anyone remember Allah as much as I saw him to. You know what he has, a, he, from the normal characteristics of his, and his norms is that he covers his mouth. He places his shimaq that he wears 
over his mouth and he covers it. And he, you rarely see his mouth. Rarely you see his mouth. And what he does is that he remembers Allah when he's picking up a book, when he's walking to the masjid, when he's going down the staircase, when he's going up the staircase, when he is between conversations, even while he's listening to you, he's doing his dhikr. And then he responds and he goes back to his dhikr. Hakada. And this is something we see very naam, we see very lightly. We see very, very lightly. May Allah make us those who are consistent in the remembrance of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam.